Hello everyone. Welcome back to the next lecture in the computer network series and today we will solve a problem in subnetting. Let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of this session, the learner will be able to subnet the given network based on host requirements. So we can subnet based on host requirements as well as based on network requirements. In today's lecture, we will be subnetting the given network based on host requirement. Let's see what are the five steps for doing the subnetting. Step number one: identify the class of the IP address and note the default subnet mask. Step number two: we will convert the default subnet mask into binary. And after converting this into binary, in step number three, we will note the number of hosts required per subnet from the question, and we will find the subnet generator and the octet position. So we need to do this with the help of this binary conversion. What we have done in step number two. And after completing step number three, we will go to step number four for generating the new subnet mask. After generating the new subnet mask in step number five, using the subnet generator, what we have found in step number three, we will be using the subnet generator and generating the network ranges. These network ranges are the subnets, and these network ranges are created in the appropriate octet position. I know it will be difficult for you to understand this at this point. But once we see an example, it will be more clear for you. Let's dive into the question now. The question is: Subnet the IP address 216.21.5.0 into 30 hosts in each subnet. Say we are given with a class C IP address and we are required to subnet it into 30 hosts in every subnet. What if we directly go to class C subnet mask? We know in a class C there are possibilities of 256 IP addresses. The first address and the last address are not used because the first address is the network address and the last address is the broadcast address. So we have total of 254 usable IP addresses. But our requirement is just 30. So if we go for traditional classful world, we are ending up with wastage of IP addresses, and that's why we are going for classless addressing. And this classless addressing is possible with the help of subnetting. So before going into the steps, just observe what is this IP address. It is 216.21.5.0, and how many hosts or IP addresses required per subnet? It's 30. Let's revisit all the five steps, and we are going to focus on step number one. What is step number one? It is identify the class of the IP address and note the default subnet mask. We know in the question it is given as the class C IP address, so we will solve it now. And step number one is it is a class C IP address, and the default subnet mask for class C is 255.255.255.0. So we have completed step number one. Let's now move to step number two. In step number two, what we are going to do? We are going to convert the default subnet mask into its binary equivalent. We know the default subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 in this case. So when we convert this into binary, we will get four octets because the subnet mask is of four octets. So we will be getting all ones in the first octet, all ones in the second and third octets as well, and finally all zeros in the fourth octet because 255 means it's all ones. I hope you know how to convert the binary to decimal. If not, I have already placed a video in the playlist. You can go and watch that. So this is the outcome of step number two. So we are done with step number two. Let's now move on to step number three. Note the number of hosts required per subnet, which is given in the question. Find the subnet generator and the octet position. We will solve step number three now. So we know the number of hosts per subnet, which is given in the question, is thirty. Now we are required to focus on the subnet generator and the octet position. In order to find the subnet generator, we need to convert this 30 into binary. So when we convert this into binary, we will be getting 11110. So please note, we can't get this number 30 without five bits. How many bits are required in order to get this number 30? Definitely five bits are required. Just observe, this is 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2. 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 is 30. We need at least 5 bits in order to get the number 30. So don't prefix any zeros. We can prefix any number of zeros before a binary number, but don't prefix zeros. Start always with one. So if you convert that number 30 into binary, 5 bits are compulsorily required in order to represent this number 30. 
So how many bits are required in order to get this number 30? Definitely 5 bits are required. This is a very very important term. So how many bits we are going to reserve in this default subnet mask? 5 bits we are going to reserve. So I am going to reserve 5 zeros in the default subnet mask. And where I am going to reserve is from the right hand side to the left hand side we need to progress. Please remember this step from right hand side. So I am going to reserve 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros here. Okay. And the remaining bits will be 1. Because we know a valid subnet mask will be continuous ones followed by continuous zeros. Let's see it now. So how many bits I am going to reserve? 5 bits I am going to reserve. And we know we need to always start from the right. So I am reserving 5 bits here. And what about the remaining places? All the remaining places till this bit it should be 1. Okay. So I am filling up with all 1's here. And that's it. How did I get this? I repeat. I am reserving 5 zeros here. And the remaining places are all 1's. A valid subnet mask will be continuous 1's. And if a 0 is started, it will be 0's throughout. So that's it. We got the new subnet mask. And what is the subnet generator? From right to left. Where is the first one we are encountering? This is the first one we are encountering. The position of the first one we encounter from the right is the subnet generator. In decimal, what is the position of this one? This is 2 power 0, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So we have the first one at the position 32. So the subnet generator is 32. And where is the subnet generator? Is it an octet 1? No. Is it in octet 2? No. It is not in octet 3 as well. So this subnet generator is in the octet position 4. So I am writing the octet position to be 4. So one thing we need to be very clear in that we need to reserve zeros from right to left and then we need to fill all ones. And in which octet the first one is occurring when we move from right to left? It is in the fourth octet. So the octet position is 4. And the decimal place of this first one, it is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 and 32. So the subnet generator is 32. And that's it. We have completed step number 3 as well. Now let's move on to step number 4. What is step number 4? It is generating the new subnet mask. We have already generated the new subnet mask. The new subnet mask is 255.255.255.224 or slash 27. Why slash 27? We have 27 ones in the subnet mask. Can you see this is the new subnet mask? We have 8 ones here, 8 ones here, 8 ones here. So total 24 ones, 25, 26 and 27 ones in this new subnet mask. And that's why we are representing it as slash 27. In decimal, it is 255.255.255. This position is 128 plus 64 plus 32. 128 plus 64 plus 32 is 224. So this is the new subnet mask. So we have generated the new subnet mask as well. Now let's move on to step number 5 that is subnet generation. So use this subnet generator which we have found in the step number 3 and using this subnet generator we are going to generate the network ranges which is the subnet. And please note this subnet will be reflecting in the appropriate octet position. We have already found the octet position is what? 4 in this example. So we are going to generate the network ranges that is the subnets. And what is the starting IP address which is given in the question? 216.21.5.0. So this is the starting of the subnet. If you observe the last octet is 0. And what is the octet position? It is 4. So we are going to make changes only in the fourth octet. And that's why we are finding out what is the octet position. And what is the subnet generator? It is 32. So the first subnet will start with 216.21.5.0. Just add 32 to the 4th octet. Why 32? Because 32 is the subnet generator. The next subnet will be 32. Just add 32 to the 4th octet. The next subnetwork will start with 64. And add 32 to the 4th octet will be getting 96, 128 and so on. So we have generated the starting address of each subnet. So the first subnet will start with 216.21.5.0. And the second subnet will start with 216.21.5.32. What about the last IP address in the first subnet? Since the second subnet starts with 32, the previous subnet will end with 31. I hope you are clear with this. So the first subnet range will be from 216.21.5.0 
to 216.21.5.31. So we have a total of 32 IP addresses in the first subnet. Because the subnet generator is 32, though our requirement is 30 hosts per subnet, we are ending up with 32. So we have 32 IP addresses in every subnet. What about the last address of the second subnet? Since the third subnet is starting with 64, the previous network will end with 63. So the second subnet's first address is 216.21.5.32 and the last address of the second subnet is 216.21.5.63 and what about the third subnet's last address? It is 216.21.5.95 and the fourth subnet will end with 216.21.5.127 and it continues. So if you observe here, this is the first subnetwork. This is the second subnetwork, third subnetwork, fourth, fifth, and it goes on. And what is the network address of the first subnet? The first IP address of the subnet is the network address. So 216.21.5.0 is the network address of the first subnet. It cannot be used for the host. Likewise, the last IP address of the subnet cannot be used for the host. Why? Because this is the broadcast address of this subnet. The broadcast address of the first subnet is 216.21.5.31. Similarly, 216.21.5.63 is the broadcast address of the second subnetwork. So if you observe, the first IP address of every subnet is the network address and the last IP address of every subnet is the broadcast address, which is usually not assigned to the host. I hope you are clear with this. For example, we are having a host which is assigned with the IP address 216.21.5.25 So this 25 is belonging to the first subnet. The device with the IP address 216.21.5.25 can communicate with its own network using switch. But it cannot communicate with other networks because they are not belonging to its own network. Observe if we use this default subnet mask, all IP addresses will be falling in its own network. Right? But if we use this subnet mask, so it says 216.21.5.0 to 31 will be in one network and 32 to 63 is in other network. A router is needed in order to establish communication among different networks. But talking about this single network, a switch is enough to establish a communication among this internal network. I hope now you know how to submit the given network based on the host requirement. I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture and thank you for watching.